Welcome to Outdoor Life, Life Adventures and Do It Yourself. I'm your host, Alex. So today we're going to be doing a review on um, something that a lot of people are into. And that is camping and RVs. There's a lot of reviews out there on very high-end models, but let's break it down. Most people, one, don't want a high-end model, and two, most people can't afford a $100,000 unit. So what we've got is a 2015 Jayco SLX. Um, it's a J-Flight model. It's 26 foot bunkhouse. Uh, we've had this thing since brand new and it's four years old now. We've used it California, um, Oregon, Nevada, and I've even used it to live in for work uh, when I was out of town for an extended period of time. So let's talk about, um, well we'll just start off with the good, bad, and the ugly on, you know, your entry level trailers. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are always looking around online and trying to figure out what is the best trailer for them. And I would say, in my case, I grew up with tent camping. Um, my family had an RV when I was uh, younger, and we it was uh, actually a early 80s model Toyota, and uh, it was only like 18 foot long. 22R 5 speed and my mom my grandmother would pack us up and we'd go from California to Nevada Utah Wyoming Colorado um, I believe once we went down into uh, Oklahoma with it and I loved doing that when I was a kid and now you know I have two kids of my own and I was trying to figure out the best way to incorporate my loves of life and my childhood adventures that I, I remember today um, with my kids. And we ran into <clears throat> um, just some things we didn't like about tent camping. For one, no climate control and, well, let's put it this way. My son was uh, like three months old on his first camping trip and we tent camped up at Lake Shasta and I remember we had my son in a dresser drawer that we took out of our our bedroom dresser we ball him up nice and warm and and had him in it but it was really inconvenient and it rained <laughs> um, you know in June it rained and it wasn't a great experience we did get wet I mean my son stayed dry but we did get wet um, and it was just a big inconvenience um, and I know that's a worry of a lot of people is you know keeping your kids dry especially when they're really young uh, both my kids um, we, we took them camping when they were really young you know my son was three four months old and I think my daughter made it to about six months before she went on her first camping trip and you know we enjoyed it we did the best we could but you know, you always want to keep your kids warm, dry, and safe. And that doesn't always work out. You know, the tent only does so much. And my parents, at the time, this is in uh, 2012, uh, 13, 14, they had a pop-up tent trailer that went from, I believe it was 16 foot popped open to about 26 feet and it had a side slide and we would hitch that up to my truck and we'd tow it around but the problem was with that unit when you put the slide in it went front to back up against the cabinets and from side to side so there was no storage in the actual pop-up so <clears throat> everything always had to go on the bed and we load up our stuff we'd make the you know the trip out there have to unload the truck load everything up systematically so everything fit in the bed and we would take uh, well there's four of us and three of them so seven people camping and 
it was just always an argument to be had on loading things. You know, we would load things up systematically and people would just be throwing stuff in the truck bed and it's like, no, we're packing, you know, seven people on the bed of a truck has to be done in a specific way. That always end up in some kind of argument. Um, and then the hassle of, you know, when you get there, you got to set the trailer up. And that takes time. So no one can go on the trailer immediately. Then you got to unhitch, unload the truck. You get everything set up. And then when it's time to go home, you got to break everything out, put it away systematically to fit back in the truck. To break the trailer down, to hitch the trailer and it was comfortable and it barely had the space but we did we did pretty well with it but there was always you know issues to be had and it was pretty much like a tent um, but we did stay dry we stayed warm and there's nothing wrong with it I loved using it but I was looking for a way to you leave any arguments about how you pack stuff and you load stuff and and simplify it to where we just left everything in a unit and I looked around a long time and I wanted a toy hauler but we just kept coming around to the same thing um, my significant other she only camped once in a, with when she was a kid and it was a pretty bad experience for her and then once as an adult and then we got together and not knowing if she was going to actually be into the whole camping thing and didn't know if my kids were going to, to, you know, basically jive with the whole camping thing. I decided to go not with a toy hauler, um, but with a standard bunkhouse. Something that I could pack in, you know, the kids, her, my parents, my cousins, uh, my grandmother, and be comfortable. And I looked around, looked around, looked around. And I found this model, and like I said, it's a 2015 Jayco J Flight SLX 26 uh, bunkhouse. And I finally just pulled the trigger, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get it. It was uh, 15999, $16,000 when we bought it. And it, it's an entry level trailer. It has pretty much everything every big trailer has as far as a high-end model but it is you know it is a cheaper model perfect for us um, and so far we love to use it and you know the good thing is it's an efficient trailer to buy you know we typically we do a family reunion every year and somehow I always end up with at least you know four or five kids or more in my trailer and we got a model with I chose linoleum floors and you know just the basic package you know, I didn't get carpet I didn't get leather um, I didn't get super fancy appliances and it was great I mean it had a, a manual thermostat for the bunk heater um, the ceiling had a standard 13.5 uh, air conditioning unit, uh, 900 watt ref uh, microwave, three burner stove with an oven, and your standard RV fridge and freezer. And it works perfect. As far as everything, you know, like I said, I lived in it for, you know, three or four months for work, and I was very comfortable. It was the middle of winter. Um, now, there's actually two of us, me and a co-worker, staying in it, and we stayed comfortable. Um, if I was by myself, it has a 40-gallon 40 40-gallon 40 water tank, 40-gallon gray, 40-gallon black, and a 6-gallon water heater. Two of the uh, standard barbecue propane tank bottles on the front, and one RV Marine battery. Um, so water supply... I grew up using, you know, camping in an RV. You do a military shower, rinse, lather, rinse. And uh, so basically, I could go eight days at work on 40 gallons of water um, without a problem by myself. 
you know, I could cook in my own trailer. Um, I do have a, a small 15 inch or so TV. I can give you the measurements of it. I've had that TV for probably 15 years. And we just put it in here for keeping the kids occupied when it's too cold at night or too late at night to have them running around. We can plug in the DVD player. They can watch a movie and fall asleep. So I live very comfortably with it. Um, in most cases when we do camp, we have at least eight or nine people in the trailer sleeping, if not more. And we've never had an issue with sleeping space. And that's ever. Um, we've had three, four extra kids in here and we managed to do just fine, you know. So there's never been that issue. We stay warm, we have a bunk heater. You know, we've got a queen, two foals, a twin, actually two twins. So we have a queen, two foals, and two twins. And it's very comfortable, it stays warm. We always did fight a little bit with a digital thermostat because it didn't have an actual temperature setting. So I'd be up and down all night trying to adjust it so everybody was comfortable. Um, but we always stayed warm, dry. We had a place to shower, use the restroom so we could shower, you know, bathe up the kids, get them dry, get them dressed for bed, and they could hang out and adults get adult time. Awesome system. And I have no regrets about buying this trailer. Um, other than the fact that I always do want a toy hauler, it is a big inconvenience of not having a toy hauler, but I do have a long bed truck, so that that's never been a particular issue in this upcoming summer. Um, like I've said in a previous video, we plan on using it a lot more. Um, this year I've had two really big projects going on, and on both sides at least for us we've had you know family health issues and just a lot of family stuff going on birthdays and so there just hasn't been a whole lot of free time and my work has changed my work schedule this year and that's just thrown everything off so this upcoming year we are planning on doing a lot more trips um, so that's the good we've enjoyed this trailer very much I love it I still love it today I think it was a great purchase um, like I said other than wanting a toy hauler it, this is just a perfect unit on the cheap end so I mean anybody can pull it it is a half ton rated unit and actually I will show you right here that's your sticker so this thing weighs 4,639 pounds with propane. Of course, there's no fuel tank or generator in this unit. It wasn't even an option. With water, another 400 pounds. You're talking 5,000 pounds unloaded without one item in it, just your basic water. <coughs> now, everybody's got a half ton truck or half ton SUV and I've been asked quite a few times by family and some friends and co-workers, you know, is it truly a half ton towable unit? Um, and I'd say yes. Um, I tow this with our 04 Expedition with a 4.6 and it's got the light duty transmission, the 4R70W and it pulls it without an issue. Um, Suspension wise, it's a little light on the on the back end. You just have to adjust your uh, weight distribution bars. But as far as braking and power to get it moving, yes, it, it weighs about 5,000 pounds empty with just water. Um, with no clothes, no pots, pans, knives, food, nothing. It weighs, just say it's 5,000 pounds. Um, there's not many people that would take a trailer out without any water in it and we always take ours with water for doing dishes, showering, you know, running the toilet, whatever, it, it's always 5,000 pounds empty. Um, is it hard to maneuver? Um, behind my expedition, no. 
Um, that's another question I get a lot. You know, it's 26 foot long. That thing's really long. It has to be hard to get into spots. With my expedition, no. With my long extended cab long bed F250 that doesn't turn, it is a ch it is a challenge sometimes. But other than that, I, I don't see where it's unmanageable. It's not a super tall unit. Uh, it does sit relatively low to the ground. It's not like a, a lifted toy hauler design. You know, it's it's actually a pretty comfortable unit. Some things that I th that I could have upgraded. They had the same unit next to it uh, for seven thousand dollars more. Was a spare tire cover, a cover for the propane bottles, a second battery, which is only a hundred dollar battery, by the way. Spare tire cover is only twenty five bucks. The bottle cover, I think, is about sixty bucks for a hard cover. An electric tongue jack. Yeah, those are kind of expensive. Those are about 200 250 bucks. It would come with one single TV, even though the trailer's set up for two. It would come with a digital thermostat for the bunk heater. Um, I believe that's it, that it comes extra with that next upgraded package. Um, and that wasn't even to go to leather or get carpet or anything else. Um, but that was a big price tag to look at for things that I could do myself. And, well, the way it comes out of the package, nothing's really inconvenient. It's just not perfect. So that's where we're going to get to the, eh, the, the okay functionality of it. The big thing you would want to do, and I wouldn't pay the dealer to do this. You could do this, obviously, yourself. I upgraded my thermostat and I also got rid of the roof controls on the air conditioning unit. I have another video of that, but as you can see that is just a vent and before it would have a temperature f uh, setting and a control for your modes. And this would just be a standard thermostat.